Have you ever went out to make a simple car repair and then you ran into a whole bunch of rust causing that process to take about twice as long as it should? I think all of us have been there and the question is, does anti-seize really work? We're going to be testing three different types of anti-seize. Additionally, we're going to see if just plain bearing grease works just as well as anti-seize. And finally, what about just using a candle? Some viewers say that a candle works just as well as these other options. So let's get the testing underway and see which option works the best. In the first test, we'll apply these products to some bolts and then do some testing on them after three months of exposure to a highly corrosive rusting agent. We'll apply each product to some steel to see which products actually block corrosion from beginning. We'll simulate water spray off conditions your vehicle will likely experience to see how well these products resist being washed away. The testing will culminate in a capstone event when we use anti-seize as an engine oil substitute and we'll see if this innovative approach could serve as a permanent protection against engine seizure. We'll be doing some testing on these half inch wheel stud lugs which are welded into position. The zinc coating has been removed from all the nuts and bolts. At this point these fasteners don't have very much if any rust on them. However the second set of nuts and bolts has begun rusting so we'll be applying these anti-seize products to two of these bolts to see if they can block the rust from continuing. Costing $5.93 is this Permatex aluminum anti-seize lubricant. This product claims to be able to handle heat up to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit it enables parts to be removed easily when exposed to corrosive condition or extreme heat. Costing $13.78, which is more than twice as much as the Permatex, is this Loctite C5A copper-based anti-seize lubricant. Protects metal parts from corrosion and seizure up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This product does have an expiration date and is supposed to be used by 2023. The Nickel Graph Anti-Seize costs $7.29 for just two ounces. It is a high temperature anti-seize product, but there's no information on the packaging regarding the maximum temperature. The Lubomatic High Temperature Grease was only $6.50 for 16 ounces, so this is about half the price of using an anti-seize compound. It'll be interesting to see if this candle wax can work just as well as high temperature grease or the anti-seize compounds. Now fluid film is known as a penetrant and lubricant, but much better known as a rust and corrosion protector. It claims to protect all metals. It's lanolin based. The nice thing about fluid film is you don't have to have the surface perfectly clean. It claims you can apply this product to tightly adhering rust. The final four bolts will be our control and we won't apply anything at all to the threads. I'm gonna torque each one of these to 90 foot pounds. It's time to expose this test set to a whole lot of oxidation as well as heat. The ability of anti-seize products to handle heat is pretty important, so we're going to go ahead and put our test set inside this grill and cook it for right at one hour. Looks like the steel inside should be around 550 degrees Fahrenheit. When engine parts or brake components get hot in the winter time and they come across salt brine, there's a lot of oxidation that occurs. In order to simulate that process, I'm going to take this hot steel out, set it down on this piece of metal, and then spray it down with the oxidizing agent and cool it down. That didn't take long. Look at all that rust. Which products actually sealed out the oxidizer and kept the threads from becoming rusty? It will be back in about three or four months. I've been applying the rusting agent for the last 90 days, so let's get the testing underway and see how much torque it takes to break each one of these bolts free. We'll be testing a total of four bolts each. Two bolts that started off without any rust and two that had minor rust on them. The nuts were torqued to 90 foot-pounds and then experienced a pretty intense heat cycle over 500 degrees. So breakaway torque should be less than 90 foot-pounds if these products completely block corrosion. Permatex Aluminum did great on the first sample at 77.7 .7 foot-pounds. The second was even better at 73. Testing Loctite Copper next. Loctite did even better than Permatex on the first sample at only 68.1. The second sample was nearly as good at 71.3. So Loctite takes the lead from Permatex. Nickel Graph didn't do quite as well as Permatex or Loctite on the first sample at 78.2. The second sample required slightly more torque at 80. So Loctite holds on to the lead. The Lubromatic High Temperature Grease didn't do quite as well as any of the other anti-seize compounds at 82.6, but that's actually still pretty good. 
The second sample required quite a bit more torque at 102.6. The alarm on the torque adapter sounded just as the candle wax nut began to move at 151.7 on the first sample. I stopped the test when the alarm sounded on the second candle wax sample and switched to a larger torque adapter. The second nut broke free at 142.7. The first fluid film sample broke loose at 111.3. The second one took quite a bit more torque at 131.5. The control bolt didn't have anything applied and required 124.1 on the first sample. It was down quite a bit to 96.5 on the second. For the bolts that started off slightly rusty, once again Permatex did a terrific job at 74.8. The second sample took slightly more torque at 85.2. Loctite required 76.1 on the first sample. The second sample required slightly more torque at 80.1, so once again Loctite did slightly better than Permatex. Nickel graph needed 81.9 on the first sample. The second sample required 87.3, so Loctite remains in the lead. The high temperature grease required 97.5 on the first sample. The second sample required slightly more torque at 102.7. Once again, candle wax really struggled at 138.6 on the first. The second sample was slightly better at 123. Fluid film needed 128.6 on the first sample. The second sample took slightly less torque at 125.9. The control required 109.5 on the first sample. The second required quite a bit more torque at 123.6. All three anti-seize products did a terrific job with Loctite copper only requiring 73.9 foot-pounds on average, Permatex aluminum 77.7, Nickel Graph 81.9, and Grease 96.4. Fluid Film has done a terrific job in pass testing as a surface corrosion blocker. However, it's not advertised as an anti-seize compound and it didn't do quite as well as the control. And finally, Candle Wax really struggled. After removing most of the rust from the threads in each bolt, I'll remove the nuts and we'll take a close look at the threads for visible signs of corrosion. The Permatex Aluminum Anti-Seize did a very good job, no visible rust. Since Loctite is a goldish brown color, it's really hard to tell whether or not there's any rust, but based upon the test results, it did an amazing job at preventing it from becoming stuck. There doesn't appear to be any rust on the threads with nickel graft. Grease actually did a fairly good job. It's a high temperature grease that we used and it actually held up fairly well. Unfortunately, it took a lot of torque to break loose the bolt treated with wax. It just didn't do a very good job at preventing rust. In fact, there's quite a bit of rust on these threads. The numbers weren't as good for fluid film as some of the other products. As you can see on our control, there's a lot of rust on the threads of the bolt. As we saw in the first set of bolts, the Permatex, Loctite, Nickel Graph, and Grease all seem to do a fairly good job. Wax really struggled. There's a visible presence of fluid film on the threads. Control has a lot of rust on it. In the next test, we'll be applying each of these products to this mild steel and then applying a rusting agent to see just how well these products resist corrosion. Anti-seize compounds act like lubricants, which is something to consider when applying torque. Dry threads will have more friction during the torque process and normally require much more torque to achieve the same clamp load as a lubricated fastener. There are quite a few things to consider when selecting an anti-seize compound. Aluminum and copper-based anti-seize just don't get along too well. Copper can cause galvanic corrosion on the aluminum. However, aluminum-based anti-seize should be fully compatible with aluminum applications. Nickel-based anti-seize can cause skin irritation and trigger other types of issues. I'll be spraying on some hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt mix, which is highly corrosive. We'll see just how well these products do at blocking corrosion. It's only been about 30 seconds and there's already corrosion forming on the control. When it comes to an anti-seize, you definitely want a product that's not going to wash away easily when sprayed with water. In the next test, I'll apply anti-seize to this metal plate and then apply 30 pounds of direct water pressure for one minute. The water temperature is going to be around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Permatex Aluminum Anti-Seize did a very good job. In the very center of the plate, you can see where some of it has washed away from the steel and that would likely rust over time. However, this is a pretty grueling test for any of these products. Up next, we'll be testing the Loctite Copper-Based Lubricant. Permatex Aluminum seems to have done a better job than the Loctite Copper. Quite a bit of the Anti-Seize washed away in the very center of the metal. The diameter of the grease spread is a lot smaller than the Permatex and the Loctite, so this nickel graph has done a great job. There is a small area in the very center where some of this nickel graph has washed away from the steel and would likely rust. Lubromatic grease next.
Water really washed away a lot of this brake grease and the very center is an area of metal that's totally exposed without any sort of layer of grease on it. Just inside the rest of the crater though is a very thin layer of grease. It's been about five hours since I began applying the rusting agent to the test strip. So let's take a close look and see how each product performed. Wow, there's a lot of rust on our control without any sort of protection, metal is very prone to rusting. Compared to the control, fluid film did a terrific job. There's a very small amount of surface rust beginning up towards the top of the steel, but other than that, it looks really good. Counter wax actually looks fairly good on the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and chip away some of this and see how it looks. Wow, there's a lot of rust that formed behind the candle wax. Unfortunately, it just did not do a very good job of providing protection. Looks like grease has done a great job at corrosion resistance. So what I'm gonna do now is wipe off this grease and see if we can find any signs of rusting. A very important role for grease is corrosion prevention, and this grease has done a terrific job. The nickel graph appears to have done a really good job of preventing corrosion, but there might be some oxidation forming, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nickel graph from the metal. No visible sign of corrosion. Loctite copper has definitely done a great job. I'm going to remove the anti-seize compound. Loctite definitely did a terrific job at blocking corrosion. The Permatex aluminum looks great as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove the anti-seize. No visible signs of corrosion with Permatex. We'll see if this anti-seize actually works as an engine oil replacement in this small engine. I'll be adding the anti-seize to this hole that I've cut into the side of the engine and then placing the see-through panel on top of the hole. All of the oil has already been drained out of this engine. Definitely plenty of anti-seize in this engine. Let's give this engine a run. The anti-seize W120 level is full. Well, on a positive note, it did not seize. However, it sounds like it threw a rod. Let's tear this engine down and take a look inside to see exactly what happened. Wow, check that out. There's a lot of aluminum that's inside the combustion chamber. Obviously, it's gotten past the piston rings. Let's see if I can scrape some of this off. Wow, look at that. All right, we got quite a bit of flakies inside this engine. The cylinder wall is actually coated with anti-seize, so there's no way this engine was going to seize. Unfortunately, the connecting rod just came apart. I'm going to take this back panel off and we'll see if we can find out what happened. Wow, still very hot in there. I'm going to see if I can push the piston out. Wow, the connecting rod just snapped. Obviously quite a bit of scoring on this piston, but I suspect this damage was caused prior to using the anti-seize. Wow, the aluminum in this anti-seize became highly abrasive and tore up the connecting rod. Well, as it turns out, the bottom end of the connecting rod broke as well. You can see it's also badly bent. Anti-seize compound definitely does not make a good motor oil substitute, but the product did what it says it's supposed to do, and the engine did not seize. Actually, it did quite the opposite. It got a little too loose, and the engine came apart. The three anti-seize products actually did a really good job at preventing corrosion. Even grease did a decent job, so if you're in a pinch and you have to use something, Grease is definitely better than nothing. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.